Welcome to Star Wars Lore with Idiots, the show where we delve into the rich and complex history of the Star Wars universe. However, some of our co-hosts still struggle to grasp the concept of the rule of two and question why there couldn't be a rule of three or more. And welcome back to another Star Wars Lore with Idiots. It's already popping off already. Ram's already <laughs> being mentally damaged. Welcome to RSG Star Wars Lore with Idiots. I'm your host and lore master, Ranger J1999, where I try to teach a bunch of idiots lore, and it usually goes through the doghouse. Uh, that being said, we'll introduce the idiots, idiots in a second. Now, if you like this series, we put it up on YouTube every Friday after we record it. We usually record it on Sundays. Patrons get it early. Um, usually I try to get out Monday or Tuesday for the Patreons, no later than Wednesday, but I've had a lot of stuff going on. We've got a big, uh, we do Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes as well, and we've got a big get-together coming up in, uh, less, not eight days there, Ram? About Jeez. Eight days, yeah. nine days, yeah, depending like on when you that. get out there. Yeah, so when we've been busy, I've been getting my costume put together and other stuff that we're going to be doing there in Vegas for those four or five days. Um, so it's been a lot going on. I've been doing a lot of stuff in the background, but not that we still got the episodes come in. We had a great, uh, if you haven't checked it out, check out last week's lore video, but a great episode with the ladies. Uh, we had a ladies night since last weekend was father's day. Um, I want to do something cool. We had a special guest author, Heather on, uh, friend of Desi. We had Desi on and we had uh, Kate gaming. who's really been showing up the idiots, uh, quite, uh, Quite a lot, actually. Uh, so if you haven't checked that one out, please do. It's on Shadows of the Empire, uh, a, a forgotten book, but an important story that covers uh, between episode five and six, what happens with Luke and how they find Han and all this other stuff. So go check that out if you haven't already. And you can check it out if you don't want to listen to it on YouTube, because you can't, whether at work or something. You can download it as a podcast. You can go to Podbeam, or you can check it out on um, Amazon. Someday we'll get on Spotify. I've given up for a fright now. I'll try it again sometime in the future um, when... The <laughs> You tell me how this works. I don't know how they works. Ram, you've gone blurry. He is a ghost. See, Walking it's true. Blurry. Yeah, that was weird. Ram, you drank water and you started going transparent. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? Uh, okay, yes, you're drinking something. Okay, okay, you're drinking bourbon. Okay. All right, let's introduce the there we go. let's introduce the idiot. Speaking of which, uh transparent boy himself. Uh Ram's here. What are you drinking there, Ram? What are you doing? It's got a little bit of Elijah Craig mixed in with some Dr. Ooh, Pepper. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, Cashmere, uh, what do you got going on today? You usually have some fine uh, booze in your corner there you're sipping on. Today I'll uh, crack open a recent bottle of Four Roses, so we'll, uh, we'll just continue it. All right. High quality. Mm. Uh, and last but not least, he's been gone for, for a few of these episodes, but he's back. The Will and Cannon near himself, Carthaginigus, with his coffee. Is there anything in the coffee, or is it just good old... Oh, God, no, dude. No. Just good old-fashioned no, coffee. Morning. Just good old-fashioned coffee with a very, uh, very good message on it. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Um, so Todd, the... I was your favorite cardio workout. That's not true. <sighs> not even well, close, Ram. You're not ample <laughs> enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or solid God, solid enough too i mean it just went transparent on us so anyway so the way this works is i'm going to cover some star wars lore with these guys just in general terms i pick a subject i'm going to let these guys have a guess at it here in a moment we'll see if they can guess it usually they don't kate's the only one that's actually figured it out on the show <laughs> and it's uh sad to say that uh kate is uh, one for one, and they're like oh for nine hundred. So, um, but I will give them a quote. We'll see what they can come up with, and then on these lore videos, we just cover the general stuff. I don't get into the minutia details with these lore videos. If you want the minutia details, go do your own research. But hopefully, this what what's your appetite enough that you because that sounds interesting. And like on the last one, we talked about Shadows of the Empire, um, and people are like, I need to go read that book. Like, yes, you should. It's a really good book, you know. So, um, so yeah, hopefully it. it, it piques your curiosity you want to go learn more about these characters and stuff again we could be here for five hours talking about some of these subjects but you try to keep this about an hour no more than an hour 15 30 minutes at the most but that being said let's rock and roll and of course if you are watching this on youtube leave comments always appreciated if you're listening on the podcast give it a five star rating you know interact watch it all the way through it does help us watch time all that stuff okay that being said let's get in today's subject i'm going to give the quote 
And then I will go around the corn, as our good friend Grande Patron would say on our streams, uh, and see if these guys can get it. All uh, right, here we go. Your quote for today's lore video. And with the sun, the Jedi truly return. This is a quote from Sha Kun. A vision they received before they died. That's your quote. And with, with the, the sun, sun. And with the sun. The Jedi truly return. Uh, that marinate for a little bit. Let it marinate. I see some brain melting happening. Okay. Let's let's go to Kashmir. You you seem to be the most lost. I'm interested to in see what you have for me today. Do you have a legitimate guess, or are you just going to pull some strange shit out your ass as normal? Always legitimate. Yeah, that's not that's mm -hmm. never been a thing. All right, go ahead, Cash. What do you got for me? Right. Well, I think the sun. Reminds me of uh, you know hot weather. S O N. You're going. You're going to Vegas. S O N. So son, as in gamblers. son or daughter. Sorry, I'm one of my favorite you off. gamblers, Perrin Ferris. Firth, I think. Uh, Firtha, Mon Mon Montha's husband. We're gonna learn about him in honor of your Vegas trip. <laughs> I'm just impressed that he made that connection. He really went. <laughs> far for that man he, he really is, he is. went around i mean he really went to outer space smoked some cushion and came back for that one jesus no he, is that a is son. Wrong. he has a mom wrong that's, i think i think i don't know we'll learn from you today we, we will and that's not the the way son is being used in this sentence so yes uh all right uh ram you have the blank stare uh this ought to be good it, Ram already knows the rules. If he does anything to break the rules, I will cut him off immediately and go to Karth. So, uh, Ram, what do you got for me? And you're muted. Good job. Try again. Me yes. and Cashmere, uh, we're, we're kind of on the same wavelength here. All right, Karth, like what we, is your guess? We tend to we tend to think alike. Great minds no, think no, alike, all right? right? No, just skipping <laughs> so, you immediately. Karth, what do you got for me? No, 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 no. Um, no. So, 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 you said... And with uh, the sun, the Jedi truly return. I did right? say that. So yes, again, I, I read again, that, yes. like we're going to Vegas soon. So you know, oh, sun God. and sun. <laughs> uh, so you have to think Tatooine. But then you have to oh, think of important go. people okay. that are on Tatooine. Okay. And so, uh, well, I, my mindset immediately went to Lo Owen Lars, right? Because like he's a sun <laughs> on a planet with a sun, two suns actually, two suns. and the Jedi did return, right? Anakin did, did return, so. They and Luke, to that planet. So I mean, episode. you know, and with the sun, the Jedi, it, it all links back to Owen Lars. Makes perfect sense. Karth, what is your answer, please? I'm just ignoring that nonsense. Um, oh well, God. I'm going to go completely off the reservation because I want to take, uh, I want to <laughs> take a little bit of a of a wild stab at this because you said with the sun's return, sort of the Jedi. So I think we're we talking about like the Moon Knights, this really uh, elusive group of Jedi. <laughs> that uh, only operate in the darkness. They're kind of like uh, spy Jedi. They call themselves the Moon Knights, um, <laughs> and and that's and then they had a kid, and then it was a son, and then we're talking about that kid. No, <laughs> who became a Jedi? <laughs> no, just... that's all I got. That's all I got. No, that's just. I don't even know where you're coming at with that quote. I don't even recognize it or the person who you're quoting from. That's why it, I could have given some other quotes, but it would have made it extremely obvious. I'm like, let me find something that quoted related to this person that, you know, would not be easy to try to guess, but not hard either. So, no. <laughs> I mean, if it's not easy, it's hard for us. So, uh, yeah, it will even when I've given you, th I thought easier ones. Yeah. Yeah. The other quote would be, I'm a Jedi, like my father before me. Uh, Luke? Yeah. Just to Luke. that. Yeah, it's Luke. See if I'd given that quote. I see. I was close. I said Owen Lars. You know, Owen no. and Luke. And you know and, what was and, hilarious? You know, no, you know what was hilarious, Ram? I got a uh, thing on my Facebook feed in the in the Swoga group that's like uh, it's like a like a Swolo conversion of Star Wars characters. So it's like a bunch of ripped versions of the same characters. My favorite thing was for Owen and uh, and his wife. There were the the Amberu. The they were the skeletons just jacked. <laughs> <laughs> it was like oh yes they didn't change it the best uh, part all right i just yes. love i love that it's like imperial troopers only imperial troopers can be so precise 
proceeds to be you watch can- exactly Cass- imprecise the entire if rest you watch of the series. Cassie and Andor, they are very precise. <laughs> I like to Facts. see them just slaughtered. It was like, oh, that's the way stormtroopers should be. Where, where has this been? All right. Um, Plot armor. I know, right? <laughs> So anyway, yes, today we're doing Luke. Now we're going to cover real briefly where he is in canon, but I want to cover some legend stuff with Luke. Um, the obvious stuff will go over very quickly, um, but there's a lot of legend stuff about Luke that uh, I just want to just whet your appetite for today and just briefly mention um, of Luke's journey in legends, which is totally different than what is in canon. Um, so real quickly, uh, Ram, you all three of you should know very well Luke Skywalker, but uh, well, you know, what's your favorite thing about old Luke, Lukey Skywalker? Um, I Rams is incest, kissing his sister. <laughs> That's Rams. Look, favorite. I mean, if you didn't get you know, wet your wet your dingling watching that, like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Well, I guess you don't know everything uh, about women, Ram. All right, uh, Karth, No, he's go- a he's a total badass, yeah. and I mean in legends, like yes, in canon, obviously, what we got is he's a badass, anyways. Until the sequel trilogy, we can just ignore that. Yeah, but in legends, God, that. damn the shit he can do. Yeah. I think the part I like most about legends material from Luke is like the the take on him. Uh, rebuilding the Jedi Order and with like yeah, Al Katar and, and those kind of characters. Yeah. Um, because they just do a yeah. really good job of him like learning the lessons from like from Yoda and old Ben as to why the Jedi struggled at the end of the at the end of the Republic and the lessons from his father of why he's fell and, and incorporated all that into teaching the next generation of Jedi. Did. And so it gave you a lot more of a um balanced approach where it wasn't just so like strict and oh you can't catch the feelings you're gonna be a bad person yes Luke that is, is why it's so hard to, to watch the sequel trilogy yeah uh <laughs> cashmere what do you got for me buddy on luke um i mean he's the ultimate friend i mean he like he's just like after the training i'm going to save my friends they're he did do they're that. Okay. All right. All right. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna. So for canon and and legends, the story doesn't differ at all, right? He's born in 19, 19 BBY, and if you don't know, that's Battle Before Yavin, which he is the famous hero for. Grows up on um, Tatooine uh, with his uncle Lo- Owen and Aunt Beru. We do know from the sequels that his father, of course, was Anakin Skywalker, and his mother was, of course, uh, Queen Amidala, Padme Amidala from Naboo. Um, raised on Tatooine, um, nothing really happens. Uh, we did have the recent Kenobi series that, you know, but I mean, you know, it, it still doesn't differ from the fact that uh, when he turns 19, uh, he, you know, the chance purchase of the droids R2-D2 and C-3PO. Uh, leads him on an adventure that leads him to Obi Wan, that leads him into uh, the attack on the first Death Star and joining the rebellion. Um, then he goes on a journey to become a full fledged Jedi with the Empire Strikes Back, um, and everything that happens there. Then uh, we talked about it last week: Shadows of the Empire, where Luke goes on a journey to become a full fledged Jedi Knight and learning the ways of the Force. And this journey that he goes on to. Uh, as well, then we get into the Return of the Jedi, where he finally confronts um, uh, Vader, uh, his father, learning the truth about his father at the end of Episode Five and Episode Six. All that doesn't change from Legends to Canon. Now, after that point, it differs greatly. Now, in the Canon version, we really don't know what happens to Luke, other than he starts the Jedi Order, runs into Ahsoka. We see him in Mando season two, that great epic fight scene uh, of him coming down the hallway, just kicking the shit out of the dark troopers. Um, and we see his, you know, see him starting the Jedi Academy, which we don't really get much story on until the, the only thing we've seen of it is that, uh, you know, he sends darkness and Kylo, his nephew, try to kill him. And that led to the destruction of the order. Um, uh, at least the buildings. We don't know how many Jedi died in that. Allegedly, I guess they were all killed or something, which puts Luke down this dark, you know, uh, dark path where he just doesn't want to do anything anymore. 
Uh, he just wants to be a hermit. If you've seen the sequel trilogy, you know what happens with. That's they, not what happens in Legends. Yeah, go ahead, Carl. They really undersell like him rebuilding Jedi Order. Like they almost make it look like he didn't even try, because the Jedi Order he looks like he's rebuilding is only like a like a handful of students, right? And yeah. it, which is kind of odd because in like the Legend stuff, it's like once the Empire is defeated and pushed back to a degree, like everyone who survived or was or whatever they'd kind of come out of the woodwork and kind of commune back together when the new republic forms and they're just like no nope, didn't happen doesn't exist yeah. <laughs> there were no other survivors after the events of episode six just luke and leia <laughs> luke turned from this amazing great just bad ass dude that we all knew in the original trilogy and then what we knew in legends up to that point to i failed and now i'm gonna go hide and well, then i didn't mind that i'm going to disrespect all my stuff so and that's the part that you know, i can't me. i can't save i can't save my my nephew even though i saved the most evil man in the whole galaxy because he's my father and i i yeah, alone saw the good sense. it's just i mean i could see him disney going, good job i could see him pulling away and maybe being a hermit but not wanting to try to teach again and rebuild afterwards because, you know, of everything that happened. But Well, I mean, and then, like, the, the conflict in this teachings. Like, you literally said it yourself, in Legends, and I get it, it's Legends, but in Legends, he literally learned from the mistakes the Jedi Order made and adapted to those, and was like, oh, yeah, this is what led to the downfall of the Jedi Order. Let's not do that. And what does he do in the secret trilogy? Well, a Jedi can't have attachments. You have attachments to Han, Chewie, and, and Leia. Yeah. Will you? <laughs> so, yeah, let's get into the legend stuff here, because I think his journey is really, really fascinating. So much better. It's so, so it's so rich. Um, <laughs> so after after the, the fall of the Empire, um, he helped keep oh, blurry, peace. Yeah. Kind of goes on a journey a little bit for a few years, but he's also helping the New Republic. First, he helps to peace the remnants of the uh, Empire. Um, when, uh, and this gets into the hair of the empire, uh, when Palpatine returned with his clones, he actually infiltrated, uh, as, um, one of his, uh, guards, uh, he fell to the dark side, uh, and became the emperor's acolyte. It was actually, um, he gets redeemed, uh, and then, um, he goes kind of on a spiritual quest. He does some stuff for the Republic, but he's still searching for himself. He's still looking for the answer. His fall to the dark side itself really taught him some things um and so he you know once he figured that out and kind of got his new philosophy that we were talking about that's when he starts the new jedi order in 11 aby so um so five years after return of the jedi is when he starts the new jedi order and he started teaching force sensitives uh on jedi praxim um and, and thus fulfilling his promise to pass on what he had learned but he'd also um learned a lot of things on his journey and so you guys we talked about you know the the new jedi order I had some people that that you know that uh questionable past kip Dern was one of his early recruits corn horn uh we can go down the list uh, really interesting characters that uh had their own journeys uh but luke was training the new generation to you know that attachment is fine but it's you know it's all about limitation it's all about control you know, you can love someone, but you just don't go over the, the moon for it. You know, you have to learn how to accept loss. Winning is just as important as losing. And how you deal with those emotions is what's the most important thing. You know, understanding the dark side and learning about the dark side will not lead you to the dark side. You know, so um, it's only when you allow it to control you that that's when this happens. So there's a lot of cool stuff there. They go in the New Jedi Order. Um there are some things that happen in the books. There's the Black Fleet Crisis, the Al Almanian Uprising, um, another battle with the Waru. But um, he was over. He, he was able to, with the New Jedi Order, sort of help the Republic really get you know situated. Um, and through this, eventually, we talked about in the Mary Jade episode. He starts having relationships and goes on journeys with Mary Jade as well. Part of his spiritual growth. Um, she's a perfect oil for Luke in the sense that. They've both been on the dark side. They've both been redeemed, you know, and, you know, he pro proclaims his love for her and they get married in 19 uh, ABY. She becomes a big part of, 
Luke's life um, in the Jedi Order. Um, so that leads into the big thing. We talked about this before, the Vujin Vong. Um, and this led to a lot of stuff um, as he, he led the way in the New Jedi Order. Now, at this time, this is eight years later, Han, Leia had had three kids. They were all very young teenagers. Um, they were all part of the New Jedi Order. Um, but they get into the, the Vushin Vong War. Um, at this time, Mary Jade gives birth to their son, Ben Skywalker. Uh, so they do have a son together, Ben Skywalker, who's actually a really cool character in the book. Uh, they do a good job of raising him. Um, because of this, the we talked about this in, I think, a previous episode, uh, the, the Galactic Republic, because of the Vushin Vong and them all having to come together, all the different factions became the Galactic Federations of Free Alliances. And they're the ones that helped push back. Luke led uh, the charge. He also was the one that found the living world. That was the original homeworld of the Vushin Vong. Uh, Zonoma Zagat is the name of the, of the planet. Um, and with the help of Jaina and Jason, they defeated the main overlords, the Vong, and they were able to defeat the Vong at the end. Um, now, after the Vong War... Luke, he kind of maintains his prominent role in the Jedi. Uh, there's another thing, the Dark Nessus Crisis. Um, and this is a really important thing, is after the Vushin Vong War, after this thing, um, there was a lot of thoughts. After you go through war, some of the philosophy of the Jedi were like, hey, look, we just went through this and we have these beliefs, but let's have a council. Luke was like a Grand Master because, of course, he's Luke. But that's when he starts accepting the older teachings of the Jedi, of the Jedi, believing in the unifying force theory, that there's two parts of the force. There's the living force, there's the, the galactic force. We have to look at the will of the force, but, you know, uh, the force is the force. It's what you use, with, it's how you use it. You know, you are who you are. And so the Jedi started to kind of fall into that kind of, uh, of, belief system and that's when the, the i call the second new jedi order kind of gets launched um there's a new council that's put together uh where it's jedi and the jedi council it's the jedi and membership of the military and the new republic to form this new kind of cohesive group um of the jedi um and so um and then after the the next crisis there's there's a, a downtime of peace you know they just it's a it's a rebuilding phase it's a rebuilding phase for the republic and it's a rebuilding phase for the jedi so you know at this point um a lot of trauma so the jedi mainly focused on healing and growing and uh, using their new philosophy to help the new you know the new coalition uh in the galaxy at this time luke's we've talked about it but we're going to get into it now uh his nephew jason goes on a pilgrimage because he's really scarred i mean literally physically and emotionally from what he gets goes through with the vong um and there's a lot of scarring that goes on the wrong anakin solo died Chewbacca died you know people died in the vushan vong war that were really close jaina goes on her own journey um at this time uh this is many years later ben's now a padawan learner to his his nephew jason solo um that's after he comes back um and what happened is um this leads to the second second galactic civil war this is where jason solo becomes darth Cadus. um tries to takes luke's son and turn him to the dark side to become his new apprentice because ben skywalker is exceptionally powerful in the force and i mean exceptionally powerful um but at this time, he's still Padawan. He's not where he's not reached his potential. Um, Luke does confront uh, Jason Solo, uh, who's now Darth Cadus. They fight to a, a draw. Um, I think, you know, if you read the books, it felt to me like Luke just didn't have it in him to kill his nephew. You know, he just he just didn't couldn't do it. He really fell to the dark side. He was trying to save him more than anything like he did with his, you know, like he did for Vader. Um, it was actually Jaina that saw this and realized that her brother was couldn't be redeemed. Uh, and if you read what happens in the Second Galactic Civil War, J Jason was ruthless. I mean, absolutely ruthless. Um, and so that leads her to go get trained uh, by Bubba Fett. Uh, and um, and she's the one that takes out Jason Solo. Also, Jason's the one that kills Mary Jade. Luke didn't know that in time. It wasn't until after he much later that he learns it was actually Jason that killed. RJ, but uh, yeah, 
Um, but it was Jaina that, that picked up the sword to basically take down her brother. And that's how Jason Solo dies in the novels. Um, so let's take a pause here so far. Haven't gotten to like any specifics or anything. So if you guys have questions now is the time. Let's go around to the idiots. Uh, Mike, a.k.a. K, a.k.a. Big Guy, what do you got for me? <clears throat> um... So did uh, did Luke Skywalker make a lightsaber out of a bicycle? Like a speeder handle? bike handle? No, that's corn horn. Yeah, I, I miss oh, okay. I, I misspoke right. that time. I, I I said bicycle, but I was thinking speeder. But you know what I mean? Yeah, the corn horn did. It's actually one of the coolest lightsabers I've ever read about. He had nothing, so he took this, you know, the the handlebar, and that was what he used as the basis for that. And then he went and salvaged everything. You know, he knew he needed certain parts. They went on this kind of little cool story where he found all these used parts and stuff and made this lightsaber, but he wanted a, you know, um, he has no telekinetic skill with the force. He can't lift things. He can't throw things. He can't force choke, but he's very good in battle and reading people's intentions. So he created a blade that he could do kinds of cool stuff with. Like, you know, he could twist the handle and uh, it made it twice as long, that kind of stuff. Um, surprise a few Vong with that move um and uh yeah he's he's an actually a cool character no luke's luke so luke's lightsaber stays the same it doesn't change the cool thing is when marv joins the jedi order he gave her i believe anakin's lightsaber before she made her own uh the purple one and i want i don't remember where it went the lightsaber went after that i want to say it went to anakin solo and then it went back to I think Ben had it. Uh, Anakin's lightsaber or Darth Vader's lightsaber? Anakin's. The one Luke had originally. How did he find Anakin's? Cause... That's because they found it because, remember, in uh, Hair to the Empire, they found Luke's hand. That's what they used for the cloning process for the new Palpatine. For Palpatine. Oh, that's right. Okay. And so they found the lightsaber. That's how they, they were able to get the, the lightsaber back because the Empire had it and they found it. Because they found his hand in the Bestman. You know, that had been cut mm -hmm. off. That's what they used. And they heard of the Empire story. That's where they got the cloning stuff for Palpatine. And then, of course, in the, in the, in the new canon, it's... Ma Maz Kanata has it. <laughs> I don't know how he got there. Just, yeah. And then they, they never explain around. how they have it. Yeah, they just floating yeah. around. They never yeah. explain how she got it. Nah, never explain just what she does around. with it. It's just... Yeah. It's Somehow just... the lightsaber returned. Mm-hmm. That seems to be the explanation for a lot of things. It's just, just, just because. Just because. All right. Uh, any any other questions there, Kay? Thoughts? Okay. Mm -hmm. What about you, Rambam? Questions, thoughts so far? No? No? Nope. No. I'm enjoying the story. All right, Karth? Um... No, not really. I mean, it's just interesting. That they, it's like they... <clears throat> It's always interesting how they they did the the story of Luke beyond um, episode six because it kind of seems like the guy has plot armor so mm -hmm. thick that like a Death Star couldn't kill him. Mm -hmm. But they do it they do a good job still telling the story around him because his his entire life is just surrounded by tragedy. Like no matter where he, from his origin to his end, his entire life in in the EU is just tragic. Yeah, because it's like. You know, you 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 fall, you pick yourself up, you find love, they die, your 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 sister has kids, your kids kill your wife, you know, they kill each other, you know, you, they try to kill your kid, you know, it's just like, and then like your best friends start to die off, your sister dies off, your brother, your you know, your brother uh, brother in law fall, dies off, like everyone just dies, and you're just left there enduring everything, and it's just kind of like. You know, he could be like one of the biggest windups, the one of the most tragic Sith lords ever. <laughs> but he doesn't. He actually, no. yeah, he uses loss as a way, as a learning tool, as a as a way to yeah. better himself and better the people around him. He accepts grief, you know, um, and uses it in a in a very positive way, you know. Um, so yeah. Um, now. One of the interesting things that happens after the Second Galactic Civil War, we haven't really touched on this. There's a lot of anti just because of what Jason Solo did, trying to take down the New Republic and everything that went on, went on. There was a lot of anti Jedi sentiment, and it was and it culminated in a uh, new Chancellor of the New Coalition, uh, Natasha Dalla. Um, she ascended to the Chief of State, and she really did not. She really fostered a lot of anti Jedi sentiment. 
and this led to a lot of tension between the Jedi Order and her government. Um, she actually arrests Luke Skywalker for dereliction of duty because he had to ask her to do. Remember, they have the new council. She told him to go do something, and he said, "No, I'm not going to do that." I, I mean, I I work with you. I don't work for you. Kind of things, you know. One of the things, like I have the right to say no. She didn't like that. Put him in. Uh, put him on trial. He admits to doing it, you know. And so she uses her political power uh, to not pr imprison Luke, but he's exiled uh, from you know the new coalition space. So it looks like fine. So one of the things that Luke wanted to do anyway is spend more time with Ben, train Ben, uh, especially after everything that happened with Jason. And they want to find out what the hell happened to Jason. What set him? They knew Lumina, uh, Lumia had set, had put in. It was the final straw, but things had led to him. He went on this journey, and they wanted to know what it was that he learned on this journey that really pushed him to the dark side, the way that it did, because he really fell. Um, and so they went on this this journey um, to find out how he fell to the dark side. Uh, during this time is when they find the lost tribe of the Sith um, and a new character is introduced, kind of a love triangle or love story between the, the girl. And I don't remember her name, um, but um, her and Ben kind of become a thing. Um, but that also leads them to learning that, uh Oh, SpaghettiOs, Avaloth's out. They didn't know who Avaloth was, but when they went to the mall and figure some things out, him and Ben, they're like, Hmm. So Luke comes back to get on this journey he's saying, hmm, this is not, this is not good. What they didn't realize is Abeloth had been unleashed at that point. And one of the things is four sensitive beings uh, that can be controlled or touched by Abeloth. They call it being touched by Abeloth. One of the things that it did to force, especially the Jedi, not all of them, but the, the ones that were, that were susceptible to it, because this is one of her powers. They viewed everybody as an imposter. Like they no matter how they felt like there's a great scene with, I think, Cornhorn's son. Um, he just wakes up. He looks at his father, his mother and his sister. And it's like, he's, he just gets really sad. He's like, I don't want to kill them. They're my family, but they're not my family. They're not real. Those are not my, it's not my real father. That's not my real mother. That's not my real, my, my real sister. And they have you, everybody, like no matter who they see, like, they can be like their closest friends, allies, like you look and sound like Luke Skywalker, but you're not. And I got to kill you. You know, you're an imposter. I've got to stop you. And that starts a thing. And this leads to the Battle of Abeloth. Abeloth and, and does her thing, actually goes to Coruscant. It's because of Luke coming back and disobeying his exile that he's able to stop Abeloth there. It leads to confrontation um, where Luke has to go into kind of like the spirit realm the force realm it's a cool scene where he runs into jason they have this epic conver conversation uh about uh his fall and stuff um and some other things but he goes there to defeat abeloth he knows that he can't defeat her in this realm he's got to go to her source of power in this realm to defeat her in the where her power comes from he also knows he needs help at this time this introduces darth crate darth crate is the sith we don't know who he is until the very end but it's darth crate and Luke and Darth Krayt, being the representation of the light side and dark side champions, fight her. They both get m messed up from this, but they do kill Abeloth finally. Abeloth is finally defeated. One of the things Abeloth was trying to do, as we've talked about this in the Abeloth episode, she was trying to recreate the family. And she looked at Luke. Hey, he could be the father. He looked at Ben. He could be the son. And he was looking at the Sith girl that was with uh, Ben as the, the new daughter. Uh or the, the representative, but uh, I think he wanted uh, the, the, the girl to become the dark side representation, Ben to become the light side, Luke to become the father stuff. She attempted Jason, but Jason said, you're psychotic, get away from me uh, on his journey. But that kind of piqued her curiosity because she could read minds and stuff like, who's Luke Skywalker? She gets infatuated with Luke Skywalker. Um, so, and then that's pretty much the last stuff we get in the, the Legends books. Um, there's no more stories after that because then Disney bought Lucas art. They stopped making those kind of stories and continuing that, that timeline. Um, all we know in the legends book is eventually Luke, uh, he passes away. We don't know how or anything. And he becomes a woman of the force peacefully. Um, and then his great ancestor, Kate Skywalker is the one that we get with, uh, 
the fight against Darth Crate and stuff like that. Um, that was the last of the legend stuff that was put out um, right before we get into um, the end of the legends timeline. So, so far, that's Luke's journey through the legends again. Very, very just broad <laughs> stuff. Um, so, what are your questions? I'll open it up to any bit. Well, actually, I mean, well, what I'm going to say is like, kind of like Parth brought up before, all this tragedies I've always had. Maybe not to that extreme, but after hearing some of this, you can somewhat understand why maybe in, not a hermit where he would never want to be around anybody and all that stuff. But, you know, that kind of could make a little bit of sense. Yeah. You know, I mean, not like I said, not to that extreme where he doesn't want to be around anybody at all. But you can see him being depressed and and kind of, you know, kind of want to like, hey, I'm just gonna go by myself for a moment. But you 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 would think he would come back though. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. They, go ahead, they, just the differences between the two. It's like <laughs> if they did a better job, kind of with some of the storytelling throughout the um throughout the sequel on just like like even like if it's like five minutes of explanation like yeah. you re reintroduce some of the canon stuff to luke because like luke was filled with tragedy because it's like he goes off and sends you know the these jedi pad ones off to you know this yavin temple to go see they all get you know killed in this force ritual that the sith lord ends up doing and so it's just him and ben left and he's then he then he he, he fears so much for losing ben to the dark side that he doesn't want to relive the events of the other thing, and then he and then he goes crazy, and then then he goes and hermit and hides himself. You know, it the, it's just like when you don't bother to tell some of the story, it doesn't make sense. But like the the EU version of Luke is just such a a, a more stalwart character. It's like the guy gets crapped on a lot. He's got a lot of ups though. That I mean, they they do come with that, but he, he's just still. Mains tr uh, maintains true to himself and and what character he is and 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 who he is as a person, and and just keeps pushing along. But it's just like it's hard to kind of reconcile that with the current stuff that we have. So it's nice that we do have these uh, EU stuff to kind of look back and the this is a version of the character that we have, we actually uh, appreciate more than what we ended up with on the on the live action screen. But it's uh there's a lot of things that I think Luke's character brings to light that's uh that are interesting to. to see how he, he handles things and how he does things differently than than other jedi or or people in general in, the, in his past so yeah um so let's talk about some of luke's abilities and stuff uh in the legends lightsaber oh. form he was a master of everything and he actually introduced new lightsaber forms he actually in his fight against luma the first time i think he introduces the short lightsaber blade he knew that his with the whips lightsaber that she used he couldn't beat it with his um his blade alone so he created the kind of like a i don't know what they call it uh the name escaped me but it's like a wasasashi you know the shorter blade the shanto shanto i think is what it's called but no, he no. created yeah. that just to yeah. fight here that's one of the things about luke's fight style is that he's self-trained he learned everything but he trained and mastered it himself um a lot of his fights and his fighting style was kind of unique to luke um and you know so when it came to a lightsaber he was just deadly um he took down so many people in the legends books it was ridiculous how ridiculous it was just with the lightsaber um now his strength in the force what they compare it to is what anakin skywalker should have been as the chosen one that's how strong luke was in the force and as he learned his force powers he became exceptionally strong in the force to give you some stuff we know we already know about the stuff he did he was exceptional at force speed he used force speed not only to be fast in the battlefield, but he also used it to um, enhance his lightsabers that would look like just a blur of, of blades coming at you, right? Only the, the the best could even hold off. Mary J was one of them, but yeah, when you fought Luke with a lightsaber, he used force speed, not just to get around the, you know, fast, but to enhance his stuff. He was exceptional at force healing. The so Luke could take a lot of damage. If he did, he would like, okay, he, he just would start healing himself, you know, with the force. Um, he was, uh, of course, you know, telekinetic wise, he could do like force jump, like crazy distances. Some of the cool stuff they can do with telekinesis is that uh, one of the things is, um, uh, I think it was uh, 
in, on the New Jedi Order, there was a massive uh, food fight that was happening. He walked in and he froze everything at once. Of course. And I mean everything. Every morsel, drop, item, liquid was trapped in midair. And it only stopped when Luke decided that he'd given people enough time to chill. He froze everything down to the, 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 the smallest minute thing, which is ridiculous. Uh, he was also in the books. He knocked down an AT-AT by pressing against it with the force. An AT-AT walker. He did that. Uh, he also absorbed the initial cane blast in the AT-AT. And deflected the rest with his lightsaber back at the AT-AT. Oh, you mean like what he should have done in uh, Last Jedi with all the ATM sixes and the ATATs around you, right? Yeah, it's not like he's already done that before or anything. Good job, Disney. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not salty projecting. about that at all. I'm not bitter. You're bitter. <laughs> Give you an example. Like, I was just, I was just sitting there, like, oh, this is so cool. He's doing the thing. No, he's not even there. Well, one of the things he also did too is like he was surrounded by a bunch of battle droids and with just a wave of his hand destroyed him. Oh, he pulled a mace windu. <laughs> he basically uh he caused their servos to malfunction. They all they all self-destructed on themselves. He ignored my comment. I did see that, yeah. but no. Uh you said mace and I immediately went no. Uh, <laughs> that's fair. Uh, he also used the force to uh re- crush and destroyed Darth Vader's old fortress on Coruscant, and then rebuild it with the Force. Just to give you another example of what he could do with the Force. Uh, he also, one of the things when he was fighting the Vong that he did, he managed to tend- telekinetically move an artificial black hole generated by the, the Vushan Vong that we talked about er- earlier uh, to just consume one of their vehicles. <laughs> That's what he would do. That's how powerful this guy was in the force. Like a black hole. Let me just use that to, okay. Your, your ship just got destroyed. Cool. Let me do that again. Yeah. <laughs> just to tell you. Uh, and then of course we talked his battle beyond the shadows. Now I didn't mention this, but when he fought Abeloth, he fought her hand to hand. He didn't have his lightsaber. He used the force. Uh, and his his fists to basically to do that. And then Darth Craig, he tried to attack Luke, uh, attempted to drain him, and Luke's like, I know I'm a little tired and beat up from fighting Abeloth, but piss off. And Craig's like, okay, we'll call it a draw. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how the force works. Uh, I'm bleeding more. I'm the winner. You know, um, it just... It, he was just, he was unbelievable. You couldn't, you couldn't get him with, he was immune to brainwashing. He was immune to a lot of things with the force. He was just, just he was what Anakin would have been if he had been the chosen one and gone the right path is what people look at with Luke. Um, it was actually mentioned uh, when um, Maul is defeated by Obi-Wan in Rebels. Does he see the chosen one? And Obi-Wan says, yes, right? Um, he is. Um, because that's what, Luke was, yeah, I mean, Anakin was a chosen one in the prophecy, but when people looked at Luke, right, they looked at him as what Anakin should have been. He gets, you know, um, and so, yeah. Well, and they do a great job in the stories. If you go back and look at the parallels between Anakin and Luke's journeys, is they are incredibly similar. Um, for their upbringing, but Luke decides to turn away from a temptation where Anakin gave in. Yeah. But the 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 main thing, I mean, that you could call a difference on that front is just the fact of like what was happening at the time of the decision. But I mean, they're still very similar. There's still a lot of parallels drawn between the two, and it really goes to show that you know it's not always the uh the situation that makes the man it's the it's the it's the character or the, or the resolve that that changes how you how you come away from it so interesting to see that they they drew a lot of those parallels going yeah. back and telling anakin's story yeah uh a couple other things i just thought were really cool about l- l- what things luke's does in legend book he could force stealth to the point that people thought he died that's how how good he was with force stealth he could also take the force away from people he had that ability too he could basically he wouldn't take it away but he could shut the force down on other people 
And then the last thing, what well, this will be a good one, fun one for uh, Ram. Guess what else Luke could do better than anybody? Got a point. Yes, indeed. Uh, and he taught it to Jaina. <laughs> <laughs> so just God, thought damn, just if it. he wasn't good enough. Yeah. Oh man, Legends Jeez. Luke was like pinnacle. He was also so resilient that he could take. He could become immovable. Like, I don't care what you used against him. He could lock himself in place and hold his ground where you couldn't move him, even with the force. And um, he was so, he could use the force to, to buffer himself so much that you he got hit with like ridiculous powerful force lightning. And he was like, sorry, that, that didn't do anything. So, you know. Could, uh, you, yeah. could you get a little lower? I got an itch on my kneecap. Yeah, yeah, a little something. <laughs> and not that Luke didn't get injured or hurt. He did. But I mean, he was mortal. But I mean, he learned basically what made Luke so powerful is he enhanced his abilities in combat to make him just ridiculous. Um, his connection to the Force, he spent a lot of time really being tuned with the Force um, and really learned. He always, he always, Luke never stopped learning. He, he was very humble in that fact. If someone could teach him something, he was open to learn. He didn't think he knew everything. He was always going on these journeys to learn more about the Force, learn about the Jedi, learn about himself, and go through these trials and tribulations to make himself what he considered the ideal Jedi. He didn't know what it meant. He just knew that he had to do these things to make himself the best he could be. He knew he was always in the limelight. He always conducted himself with honor and, you know, grace, um, always humble. He always listened to other people. He could disagree with them, but he would listen to them, right? Uh, even when he got charged in that trial, he was gracious. He's like, okay, you know, I disagree, but I will, I will follow the rules. Do you want me gone? I will, I will adhere to that. He didn't try to start an uprising or say this is unfair or anything. He's like, no, okay. You're the, you are the, you are the chancellor. You're the president. I got to listen to you. I will follow the law. And he did it. That is the kind of things Luke did. People followed him, uh, unquestionably because he was exceptionally loyal. You mentioned it before his loyalty to his friends. He goes on a lot of fun adventure. His, his love for Han and Leia, their relationship was always, uh, just gets better over time. Um, and he does train Leia. Leia in the books does become a Jedi master. Unlike, uh, the current canon. <laughs> so well, she was at least a knight in the current canon, yeah. though, right? They at yeah. least they at least try to at make least it. yeah. She reached the, the she at the end she reached the rank of Jedi Master because uh, her master was uh, the the Mon Calamari healer. I can't remember her name, but uh, she's the one that uh, trains Leia in the Force becomes her master. Um, trains her to Jedi in level, Legends. yeah, in Legends, um, and is the one that it, none of this other stuff where Luke trains her. Luke did train Leia, but. In the beginning, you know, but Leia's journey was a little different. She was actually the the chancellor. She was actually the head of the the New Republic for for a while, uh, and then she was raising the kids. The kids went to Luke. Luke raised them. Then once Leia got out of office, she went and learned her Force stuff and became a Jedi Padawan. To I think her Sig Sigil or her name is Sigil. I can't remember. It's it's one of those weird Mark Calamari names. I'll have to do a lore video on her because she's actually quite powerful. Um, so yeah, that that happens too. And then after that, then her and Han are like, you know what? We've saved the galaxy enough. We'll still save it, but let's go have some fun. You know, uh, Jason had a grandchild who they, you know, secretly know who she's who she is, and they protect her, and they go on some journeys too. Um, so yeah, a lot of really cool stuff with Luke. I mean, and and if you want to really get into a lot of this cool stuff, and I even covered like half of it. I mean, you really need to read the books. The ones with Luke is just phenomenal. He does some extraordinary things. I'm sure I'm, I've missed some of his other incredible feats and stuff. So hearing what you hear now, let's go to Kashmir. Um, Kashmir, I don't know. you have never really heard of this legend stuff with Luke before. This is probably new to you. What do you think hearing this? You know, what do you think? He is such a badass. Mm -hmm. Like he's, he's awesome. And you know, that's it's, which hurts more about the sequels. <laughs> is like what they could have done, what they should have done. What I they mean, should have done know. is just not touched it and skipped another thirty years ahead. Yeah, but that's just one man's opinion. Yeah. I mean, and now and now they're gonna make they're or gonna just not touched it at all. 
they're going to make Ray what Luke should have been. Oh, dude, and it. I hope the synopsis I heard on the new Ray movie is wrong because it sounds awful. It sounds uh, horrible. It's like it's set after I heard it yet, another so fifteen. I think it's it, set fifteen, it's 15 years. After years. Yeah. She destroyed Palpatine, and it's just like I'm gonna rebuild the order. And then there's a there's a person that literally sounds like a female Kylo Ren. It's exactly um, what Kylo did to Luke in his version of the Jedi Order, but it's gonna happen to Ray. And I'm like, you just you keep rehashing the same thing. Come up with yeah, something new. Yeah, I'm not the, the interested new, in that. The new synopsis is supposed to be her training two um students one male one female the female is supposed to be uh far more naturally gifted i know huge shock oh um, what's which i'm going to guess is going to create tension between the two students and probably cause the male student to fall to the dark side and, and then that's mm. where the conflict arises and that's no the, way uh, yeah wow. i know Oh my god it's so like no one Disney. ever saw this happen before i wish uh, i thought just, of that I know, they I, they <laughs> just can't get out of that rut for the life of them. Like I don't mind Ray as a character per se. I mean, she's got her flaws, but they just keep making her too damn good with no Mary explanation. Sue. I know, yeah. goddamn Mary Sue. Well, if you look at like of in the, the, the what we just talked about on Luke and the Legends, he goes through a ton to get to where he's yeah. at. You know, he earns everything he goes through in the books his journeys to make himself better he goes through harshness and training and mm -hmm. learning and growth as a character and i just never you never see that with three she just does stuff it's like even the most powerful people in the force have to be trained on it and have to go through journeys for it and have to learn from whether a datacron or through you know like luke did going back and searching the old jedi relics looking for knowledge looking for things that he help him grow and things of that nature and makes him the person that he that he is the trial and tribulations really develop his character in the books that you really love luke in the legends book he is i mean and you see why he is later on in the books the way he is because you've read if you've read all the books you've gone through that journey with luke you're like i know why luke, where luke is coming from and how he is as a character and why he's so powerful yeah he's the son of anakin skywalker so yes he's really got a connection to the force that doesn't mean anything you could be a naturally gifted athlete but if you don't work hard at it if you don't go through winning and losing and all this stuff it's not going to make you better you know and luke did that and i just I, that's the one thing i've had a problem with ray is i like ray as a character but she doesn't earn it she just no. doesn't earn it you know, and no, I, except one day, and I'm like, I am the best Jedi ever. Like, how I have learned, learned how I, to force I can be Palpatine with no training, right? I've learned how to transfer force essences on day one. <laughs> I mean, I know Leia trained her, but Leia had, you know, in, even in the in the sequel, had limited training from Luke. So there's only so much she could train her on. I know she was wiser and more connected to the force and stuff, but. You know, they needed to show Ray. I would have loved to see a scene where she's in a temple or something and the force ghosts of all the other Jedi are training her. You know, like, okay, you are the embodiment of the Jedi. You know, Mace well, or Anakin uh, comes in and teaches her not just, you know, force techniques and force abilities, but they, lessons that they, they went through. Really, they really needed to expound upon that force dyad bullshit they threw into the yeah. into the series right because that know. was that was in the in the books that came out after the series that's how they explained how she learns everything so quickly is because she's drawing from kylo's experiences a trained jedi knight um to learn how to do those things so quickly because she's just basically copy and paste the files from one hard drive to the other essentially what they're doing with the whole force dyad thing but in the movies and everything else they don't explain it and like if you allowed her to have this kind of connection with with other force masters and that's why she learns it's a bullshit thing don't get me wrong i think it's a dumb escape mechanic but at least if you evolved explains, it a little bit yeah. mm -hmm. people might buy into the character not being so goddamn overpowered all the time but no, no, she's gonna learn how to be a uh, a force healer on day one. She's gonna you. She's gonna beat a Jedi Knight uh, in a lightsaber duel, a weapon she's never used before. You know, she's fought with a stick all of her life. Now she's proficient in lightsabers. 
It's like, and then you fight, like laughingly mock at all the stories of people who cut off their own arms when they tried to use one. And you're just like, oh my god, this is so so silly. It's, but it's, I mean, it's a missed opportunity. Yeah, they. I feel like they really could have done a lot more with Luke's character, but they did not want to have another male lead, and which is just an unfortunate way to shit house a story. Well, by when it bombs just... at the box office. Well, it's well even 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 Mark Hamill, right? Like Mark Hamill has come out in interviews and said, like he was disappointed with how his character went, and he had to yeah. kind of go in with the mindset of, of after he read it, he had to go in with the mindset of okay. This is not my Luke Skywalker anymore. This is your Luke Skywalker. Yeah. This is what yeah. you want the character to be. This is not what I would have had the character to be had George Lucas still been running things, whatever. Yeah. So he had to play it off a mindset of like, yes, I'm playing the same character in name, but this is a different, a whole different Luke Skywalker. And that's why he's asked yeah. to act that way. Yeah. It's just sad, man. Cause it's like, dude, you see. You see all the accolades that you do in Legends, and I'm not saying that you got to bring everything into Legends because no, there are some stupid abilities. There are some stupid <laughs> shit that happens in Legends that you don't need to bring into canon. But yeah. goddamn, like the easiest one that, like I said, the ATATs, that's already in there that he deflected it with his mind and with the Force and with his lightsaber. Throw another one over. He's like, okay, I've had another. You this. just, yeah. That's just, oh my God. It was so. And then he dies. He dies because he overexerts himself from force projection. <laughs> After all the shit that he's done in Legends, he <laughs> overexerts himself and he... Oh my god. Yeah. So, <laughs> I wanted to make the contrast here. It's frustrating. Uh, the Luke that we had in the movies to the Luke that we got in the Legends. Of course, there's a lot more, but just to give the main points, the main things that he could do, things of that nature, because I think it's a missed opportunity. I, I, I mean, Luke's one of my favorite characters. Luke in Legends. Yeah. Amazeballs. Yeah. <laughs> Luke and Cannon. <laughs> and read the books. It's some really, I mean, his relationship with Mary Jade, I just love it. Every time they were in there, his relationship with Ben, there's relationship so with everybody. Good. It's just so good. I mean, the the camaraderie, his love of family, you know, not just for the Jedi Order, but he loved his family too. You know, and that was one of the things they changed is that, you know, you could get married in the Jedi Order. You know, that's okay. You know, I mean, it's, it's you know, being attached to someone is not a bad thing. Actually, it's a good thing. It's just when you allow it to kind of control you that's when it's bad, right? Or you get, um, uh, you become a stalker, you know, you, again, you're, you're letting your emotions run wild, you know, those kind of things. Uh, so, uh, it's, eh, eh, there's so much that they could do. I'm, 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 yeah. So final thoughts, anybody, uh, you know, uh, I think we've covered the gambit on, on Luke. So check it out. There's lots of books out there. Lots of series that you can go back and check in the legends books they are so good. From Heir to the Empire, Shadows of the Empire, all the way through, Luke has some really epic, cool, not just battles and fight scenes, there's those, of course, but the journey is what I really loved reading Luke's story and some of the things that he went through, you know, and I think you should check it out if you really like, you know, you want some good Luke Skywalker stuff, go check out the Legends. There's a lot of great Luke Legends stuff in there. I mean, great stuff where, you know, having a one-on-one -on -one battle with the top fighter leader of the Vong to... Fighting Abeloth with his bare hands. There's just all these epic moments that he has um, yeah. in the books. So, all right. Uh, we will have this out as soon as possible this week for the uh, patrons. If you'd like to become a patron and support the content we're doing, patron link is in the description. Helps us to support all this stuff that we're doing, recording, you know, paying for it and on all these different sites, things of that nature to keep the series up and running. Again, leave comments, all that is great stuff. Um, and it'll be out this Friday. This will be the last one for a couple of weeks. I said, I'm going to be unavailable myself for the next couple of weeks, uh, with 4th of July. And then it's my birthday weekend. I'm going to be in Vegas and all this other stuff that's going on. So, um, and then I'll see the schedule afterwards. We'll get one in. Um, we do have some of our American cancer society, um, charity work that we got coming around the corner too. So that might cause me to miss, uh, another one. Cause we'll be streaming like 24, 48 hours or something crazy. Like we always do for an event. Um, so we'll, we'll keep you guys abreast, but we'll have more in a couple weeks. So enjoy these. I'll try to get this one and the last one uploaded on Amazon and Podbeam and everything. So you guys can download and listen to it as a podcast. With that, I have myself in the edits. Have a great rest of your day. May the force be with you.